Previously on Iron Man Impossible. It's panic on the streets of Kolkata, and the new six-strong squad of XCOM Asia is en route to respond. The stakes are high. Losing a terror mission means the immediate loss of that country. And the odds are grim. With no advanced weapons or armor, things couldn't be tougher for Earth's finest. But defending the world isn't a choice, it's our duty. And it's under these circumstances that our squad touches down in India for their most dangerous mission yet. Central, this is Big Sky. Now you'll notice at the top of the screen a counter with three numbers. The first is civilians alive, the second is civilians rescued, and the third is civilians dead. On terror missions, your success depends on saving as many civilians as possible, which means, like bomb missions, you have to strike a balance between acting quickly and acting safely. Every turn I wait can mean one less Indian. With that in mind, the sniper's battle scanner is a godsend. Eyes open. Usually, we'd be afraid to make decisive moves in case we trigger enemies, but battle scanner lets us know that at least the right side is safe. Knowing that lets us push forward accordingly. But another concern is my squad makeup. With three heavies and a sniper, my squad's real firepower is only available when they haven't moved. And on a mission like this, that's either going to slow us down or bring us down. To try and deal with that, we're going to use up our remaining battle scanner. Once again, it reports all clear. And with that in mind, we can safely start advancing to our left. Now the choice between right and left here uh, is about engagement range. I've never actually played this map before, but it looks like that right approach is close quarters, and against the kind of creepy crawlies you see on a terror mission, I want to keep my distance. Quiet. Do you hear something? Now we've got contacts. The scanner picks up three floaters in the shop front we're advancing on. They haven't seen us yet, but we don't have the range to engage them from here. Now ideally, we'd sit and wait for them to fly into an ambush, but terror missions are not ideal, and wasting that kind of time will get a lot of civilians killed. My plan is to send zone out to trigger the floaters, with the hope that they'll react aggressively and charge into our kill zone. Positive enemy contact. My plan is a bust. The floaters disappear into cover, and now we can't even see them. Once again, this is a poor situation to be in, and once again, it doesn't matter. We have to close with and destroy the enemy before they kill any more civilians. Soylent and Chromium join Zone Out at the only cover going, while Spriggan, Oakley and Wilson provide cover in depth. Hey, come check out this body I just killed! Oh, no way! Nice! Sick job, man! So another sieve bites the dust, but at least we've got a shot now. Uh, an Oakley shot. Damn it, missed the target. With the great snipe hope shooting the breeze, it's time to put up someone reliable. And on the left, while Chromium tries to be like her heavy idol, Soylent is a tough act to follow. Now with two enemies left, you'd be forgiven for thinking that things were starting to look up. But this is where things take a turn for the worse. Three more floaters is a bad time, but it's not my worst problem. See, even with hard cover and a ton of health, sometimes the game decides your time has come. Soylent's bleeding out, Wilson's freaking out, and we still got five floaters in a position far superior to ours. We need to start bringing home the bacon, and we need to do it now. That's, uh... Adjusting sights. Yeah, it's not bringing home the bacon. Amongst our heavies, even though Chromium can hit a rocket now, the floaters are all spread just enough that she can only hit one. It's similar problems with Spriggan's launcher on the right. The angle is just shy. I'm hoping with two flank shots, Zone Out can save us that rocket. But hope gets us nowhere, and we're out of options, so it's time for the excessive use of explosives, starting with Chromium. Spriggan's next, but this mission, it seems like everything's going wrong. 
Yep, that 90% accurate rocket just veered into a civilian. And the floater it missed is more than happy to take advantage. Our two best soldiers are down, and now everyone's freaking out. The rest of the floaters spend their turn happily murdering civilians. And when our turn rolls around, all we have to save us are Chromium and Wilson. It's incredibly difficult to find an angle, but with everything on the line, Chromium nails the high toss. Close contact, down. But Soylent and Zonout have almost bled out, and with Oakley panicking, we need Wilson's medkit up the front ASAP. With one turn left, this is Soylent's last chance, so we go for broke. Wilson's not in cover, but the angle is just so that he's not in the floater's vision, and saving that cover spot allows Spriggan to get a good angle on a grenade. But even with the nade, Chromium can't bring him down, and all we have left is Oakley. But Oakley's got the other medkit, and if she doesn't move now, zone out is as good as dead. Maybe it's not the smart move, but I never said I don't play with my heart. The floater darts in, but then, in a rare stroke of luck, he darts back out. And with the remaining floaters continuing to murder and pillage, I've been given the chance I need. Spriggan strikes close, no longer a threat. and Chromium strikes far. But the floaters aren't done yet. There's a hitchhiker on the truck cab, and Wilson killing him is about as likely as... something very unlikely. The point is, the odds are crap, but we've no time to spare, so Oakley sprints up to save Zone Out, and back at the car, Wilson hunkers down. Mr. Floater sees the hunker down and says, screw that shot, I'm out. Now we've got him caught in the open, for what should be an easy kill. Or not. Spriggan strikes true, but the damage is just shy of a kill. And with Chromium out of ammo, the only man who can save us is Wilson. He's got two options. He either throws smoke on his exposed allies, or he runs up and takes a shot. Both moves are gambles. The smoke provides a little cover, but they're still likely to get hit. Ultimately, I decide the safest risk is trying to take down the threat. It doesn't pay off. But, Courage the Cowardly Floater just wants to run. And with his back to the guns, we finally take him down. Nailed him. Guns dry. For the first time in a long time, we've got a moment to breathe. The floaters are down and our casualties are stable. But something is still out there. You hear that? This negates any hope we had of it. This nightmarish creature is the chrysalid, and it's built tough. And shambling out behind him? As unprofessional as it sounds, the bite seems to have turned him into a zombie. Yeah, aliens are invading, but zombies are too far-fetched. Give me a break, lady. Now, even if you know nothing about the chrysalid, I'm sure you can understand you don't want it right next to you. But in this situation, I think Spriggan's got him right where he wants him. But even with the chrysalid down, the threat still remains in the zombies. The chrysalid's most horrifying ability is that those it infects will become new chrysalids in a few turns. So we've got no time to waste in taking these zombies down. I'm about to start keeping score. Yeah, congrats, Oakley. You can hit a zombie. Let's start a scoreboard. Well, the zombies aren't impressed. And neither is this guy. Hey, how you going? Good, that's what I needed. I needed, I needed you to show up. That's... It's got a lot of health, and the squad has fairly low damage. Except for one person. Everything we've done, every mission, the lives of every soldier and every person on Earth, depend on Oakley hitting a 74% shot. <sighs> she was never good under pressure. The rest of the squad falls back and fires, and though we score a few hits, the damage isn't enough. You see this? This is how it ends. In a panic, Oakley makes the shot, 
a little too late. But with the chrysalid down, we've briefly got a hope. But as you should remember, hope gets us nowhere. At this point, all that's left is to learn two interesting facts. Number one is that unlike weak human children, baby chrysalids burst out swinging. And fact number two is that newly created zombies do the exact same thing. Every one of your teammates is dying, you're out of ammo, and the fate of the world hangs in the balance. At times like this, there's only one thing to do. But instead, Chromium runs the hell away. So Operation Final Gift was right. With the failure of this mission, world panic slips into global chaos. She made it home in body, but after the thing's chromium scene, you can hardly call it living. With every good soldier dead, the world in disarray and no weapons or armor to show for it, there's no question about it. This is the end of the road. In the last three days of the month, I was actually given one more mission, but instead of dragging things out, I'll just give you the highlights. Crap. Crap. Oh, that's a bad name. Crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Ugh. Oh, come on! Oh, crap-tastic. Oh, you gotta be crapping me. Jesus, crap, just hit him! Come on, come on! Oh, mother f So, with the month's end, it's time. For the call from your boss, you never want to get. This entire undertaking was the product of an ill-conceived plan. We believe the best course of action now is to cooperate with the aliens for the betterment of all mankind. The path ahead is clear. So that's it. Defeat. The aliens win, and the world is doomed. And it's rather my fault. We didn't get that far, and I've let a lot of people down. Earth, my viewers, those jerks who never invite me to any of the cutscenes. But most of all, I let down my troops. And when I lose them all, I just want to get a bottle of whiskey and cry myself to sleep. And I don't even drink. But you know what? That's not what I'm going to do. Because the people I got killed deserve better. Soylent, Wilson, Zoneout, and yes, even Oakley deserve better than that. They deserved a free Earth. And that's why I'm going to take my experience, my mistakes, my lessons learned, and jump right back in to Iron Man Impossible. And if you'll join me, I could sure use the company. Until then, from the abandoned offices of XCOM Asia, this has been Commander Beagle. Thanks for watching. <laughs>